There's no such thing as a rabbit. I teach school children about the wonders of science. I get to travel to different schools every day because I work for a university, not for a particular school. One of the misconceptions that comes up all the time is to do with evolution. Not surprising, it's a difficult concept, but more specifically that animals are changing. Not so much in like a religious, I don't want to believe it sense, but more so the idea that animals could turn into anything else is a very foreign notion. What's he talking about? Evolution. Seriously? Is that how God made everything? Evolution is how we get all the different types of life on Earth. So, no God then? No. So, how do you get all the different sorts of animals? Right, so imagine there's like 10 puppies, right? And just forget that dogs have been artificially selected by humans and that the only dogs that really exist naturally in the wild are things like wolves. There's no such thing as like a chihuahua. Anyway, so imagine you have 10 puppies, right? And so 10 puppies, but there's only enough food for eight of them. So they're out hunting for food. There's only enough food for eight. So two of them die. <laughs> okay, yeah. So next there's a predator. So he's pretty fast and he catches four of them. Okay, yeah, so there's four left. So there's four puppies who were fast enough to get away and four that weren't, which are now dead. So now they want a mate. Okay, so they go out and find some ladies and but there's only two chicks so and only two of them are attractive enough for the girls so only two of them get laid the other two are dead ends so then they have babies exactly so now there's the two left that had babies they now pass on their genes their genes are the set of instructions that made them and they're passed on to the next generation now the next generation fuck. Now the next generation has, well they have the genes that in the last generation were good enough to get food, good enough to escape predators, and good enough to find a mate. So now that good collection is passed on to the next lot of animals, it's passed on to the next generation. Oh, right. Now you leave that process going for a few billion years, animals move all over the planet, in different habitats with different selection pressures and you get the variety of life on earth even you of course this also includes plant and bacteria and archaea all types of life but for sake of simplicity and this video I'm mainly going to be talking about animals you have to forget about their little faces and look at them for what they are they're a bag of genes I try to show that genes are like a blueprint a set of instructions for creating something a machine to build other machines. Now this animal that had the set of blueprints that created itself, part of the instructions are to pass those things on, they find a mate, and they reproduce. But every time those blueprints are handed over to the next generation, they're slightly different. They're not exactly the same. Every generation is a little bit different from its parents. Now, for instance, we see one of these machines, these bags of genes, and we call it a rabbit. Why? Well, this is where the misconception arises. The truth is that there's no such thing as a rabbit. The rabbit is just a placeholder name. Borrowing from Richard Dawkins, if you get a rabbit, and you put it next to its mother, and then that rabbit next to its mother, and then that rat rabbit next to its mother, and rather than mother of a rabbit, you keep going, you keep going back, how far before the two animals that you're looking at next to each other don't look anything like rabbits. There's no such thing as this perfect ethereal rabbit out in space that is the definition of what a rabbit is. It's almost similar to Plato's theory of forms, the, the idea that there's this perfect triangle out in space and it's every time you draw a triangle it's slightly off and a slight deviation from the true perfect triangle. Every bag of genes that looks like a rabbit and that we call a rabbit is really just this pause in time. Given a long enough time span, these same genes will create something like the monsters on the beach of H.G. Wells' Time Traveller. 
do we still call those things rabbits? This problem is most commonly thought icky for humans when we think about ourselves also on this time scale. There's an idea that humans are different and separate and that we don't change, a human is a human is a human. But human, just like the rabbit, is just a placeholder name for this set of genes that codes for this sort of machine right now. In a couple of thousand years, in a couple of million years, if we don't blow ourselves up, what do I become? What do the, my genes become in the future if all of my descendants go on to have children of their own? The term rabbit is just as phony as the term human and it's just an idea. It's just a placeholder name for us to categorize and group things together. The second part that follows from this that I've had discussions with friends about is this idea of, well, what happens when humans and computers become one? The singularity. Do we still call ourselves human if we're part man, part machine? Sorry, part human, part machine? Well, it's something to think about. Every time we change an animal by inserting or detracting genes, genetically modified food, People flip out because they say that you're changing the essence of whatever it is you're changing. The tomato is a tomato, you can't change it. A tomato is somehow this perfect idea and every tomato that is made is somehow slight variation from the real perfect tomato. But by changing something inside, people feel that you're losing that. You're taking away the essential tomato-ness of a tomato. But it's not like that. So what do you call something that's half human and half machine? Is it still human? Have we changed the ground rules of what human is and therefore still call it human? After all, it's just a placeholder name. I don't know, but it's something to think about. The fundamental point is that there is no essence of human or rabbit or tomato. The idea that these things have to be preserved forever is just nonsense. Given a few million years, what you call a rabbit will no longer exist. Those genes will code for a completely different animal. But those genes, the same genes that made the rabbit, will be living inside that new creature. Just like we carry the lowly stamp of our origin, most of the genes inside of us are still shared by the animals around us. Evolution never stops. Gene selection never stops. As long as things are reproducing and dying, characters and traits, genes will be selected for. The idea of the perfect rabbit is just as silly as the idea of the perfect human. There's just no such thing. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully this idea will spark a conversation. Please leave any thoughts in the comments. Uh, and if you have any ideas about future videos you want to see and maybe any questions, just pop them in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.